you look at the solar cycles, uh, there are different cycles. The shortest one are 11 years, the sunspot cycles. But then you have uh, about six important cycles that Habibullah Abdul Samatov have uh, identified and added them up. And uh, what we can see here is that the sunspot frequency has been fairly even over a long time. The, these are uh, these 11 year cycles, sunspot maximums, and the minimums are changing a little bit. But then suddenly it dropped down to almost zero. And uh, there was no, normally this cycle should have stopped here and gone up again, but instead it went down here and stayed down here uh, two, three years. And that helped cause uh, this uh, cold winters I predicted. Also, there's a 200-year cycle. So if you look at Napoleon losing his army outside Moscow because of extremely cold winter, you just go 200 years forward, and you came right, right on the dot to what happened 2010-11. Now, this is Habibullah Abdul Samatov's diagram, adding all these cycles together. And he discovered that the, the, uh, the sum of the cycles ended up down here, which is the same level as during the Little Ice Age. And he fine-tuned his studies. And we can see here that the, uh, the cycle 23 peaked up here. The next cycle was 2014. It peaked on half the level here. And the next cycle will peak somewhere around here. So the top of the peaks are coming down. And this is Habibullah's last diagram. This was the 24th cycle up here, being half of this one. The next one will be down here, the next here. So in the next 20, 30 years, we are going rapidly down uh, to cold, colder climates, the Little Ice Age. And what will this lead to? Well, it will lead to less food production, probably something like 20 to 30 percent less food in this country and perhaps even more in other marginal countries. We will have the, the result will be increased food prices that will hit uh, poor families heavily. Uh, it will cause famine disasters that will, uh, it will trigger wars. That is a very common situation. Uh, we will have a higher energy consumption, which will cause higher energy prices, again hitting the poor people. And uh, we will have some very cold winters, good for ice skating, good for polar bears, more traffic accidents, uh, and so on. So we have nothing positive to look for. Only the polar bears uh, are very happy about it. Can humans change the climate? Judge for yourself. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, I'll be happy to answer questions. Hopefully, I can. And I will bring the microphone to somebody who has a question. We actually have we have a couple of questions online in our chat um, as well, so we'll be getting to those in a moment. So you first, Mr. Bast. Well, I'm wondering, Fred, are you actually predicting observable cooling? in coming years, in the next five to ten years, you really think it's going to be noticeably colder? Yes, well, we can't notice it until it has happened, of course. But uh, we had uh, two warm winters, hardly any snow where I live in Stockholm. Normally we get uh, one to two feet snow in a season. This season we had one or two inches. But that's because of the very strong El Nino that we've had this last two winters. So we shouldn't be fooled thinking that there's some average global warming going on. Uh, we could have, we will probably have a pretty good, uh, decent winter next season with uh, enough snow to bring out the snow mover. But even during a, a little ice age, we have, a, we have experience from the 1600s, and we have a lot of written records from that time. So we had warm summers, nice summers, but we also had very cold winters and bad winters, people starving and so on. That will happen again.